want you to grab onto something that is difficult to learn. Something that you haven't quite learned, but you know is difficult to learn. So can you just think of that for me real quick? Get a topic in mind and let me know you have it in mind by, by grabbing it up here. All right, thank, thank you all for that. So I don't know what you're thinking about. Maybe you're thinking about learning to snowboard. That can be a difficult thing to master. Maybe you're thinking about, I don't know, adding fractions with unlike denominators, right? That's a tough one. What, what we're going to explore in the next few minutes is the idea of authenticity and learning. So to do that, I need us to really make sense of assuming and conjecturing so that we can understand what has been discovered about authenticity and learning. So I'm going to assume that you know what I mean by assuming. You see, and thereby I'll be an example of assuming. I'm not going to assume, on the other hand, that you know what I mean by conjecturing. So let's explore that a bit more. So I claim that conjecturing means to wonder about something continuously, consider it, test it, modify it. So when we're entering conjecturing as a way of being, this is uh, what it looks like. Uh, you might equate it to when we were toddlers and we were learning to walk. When we were learning to walk, we stumbled around a lot. We were trying to find our balance. We were wondering, without uh, so much as conscious effort to speak about it, we're wondering, how do I find my balance? How do I move in this way? And then after we learned to walk, we wondered what it meant to do that more quickly, and then we were challenged to skip, among other things. So <clears throat> now that we have a good idea and a picture about conjecturing, I want to share some stories about assuming. And then we're going to tie this all together. So <clears throat> this is a picture of, uh, I took this picture, in Thailand. <clears throat> I like to take students all over the world. It's one of the great enjoyments of my life. I take students to Thailand, and in this particular uh, case, a student of mine named Kevin loves Thai food. Loves Thai food. And he comes up to me after the meal and says, I want to share with our Thai hosts how to tell them that I enjoy it, that I like it. So I tell them, oh, that's easy. Just say, aloy mok. They'll understand you, and uh, you'll be telling them what you want. He says, OK. So the next three meals, Kevin does that. He gets the same response from, from them every time. They understand him. He's feeling very confident in, in his Thai language. And we continue to explore the country. The next place we went was to an elephant conservatory in Lompong province. This is a wonderful place. They really take great care of the elephants. They even have an elephant hospital. And this herd has flourished there. At the end of our time there, uh, the tour guide says, did you all enjoy it? Did you like it? And Kevin steps up to the plate. Aloy mock. The guy's face runs flush. You see, aloy mock means it's delicious. In fact, it means it's very delicious. And he just said elephants were delicious. And the guide says, no, we don't eat elephants. You can imagine Kevin's confusion. Assumptions take us to these places. Maybe you can remember some in your own life that took you to some place of, of humor or discomfort. Another, another thing that I really enjoy in Thailand is this. This is Wat Arun. It's Temple of the Dawn. It's in Bangkok. It's got extremely steep steps, which if you're an adventurer, you need to try this out. They're very steep. And you go all the way up to the top and you walk around and you can see all of Bangkok, the river. It's beautiful. I assume that because I love it so much, everyone will love it. So here's a picture of my students loving it. Well, Brittany likes it. Allie likes it. Rachel, not so much. <laughs> right? So again, my assumptions are uh, not getting the uh, necessary outcome that I may want. What you're looking at now is a place called Koloi Suva. This is a place in Fiji. And um, there's a young lady on a rope swing. 
Now the young lady on the rope swing is actually Allie from the previous picture, the adventurer who was actually loving the going down the stairs, not Rachel who was not loving it. Allie is a gymnast. I have watched this girl, uh, you know, do cartwheels backwards down. You know the things at airports, the the human movers on the ground. She'll do cartwheels backwards on those things. Um, I've seen her do standing backflips in in multiple locations. She's good. So when we get to this rope swing in Kolei Suva, I'm assuming Allie's going to do something amazing, right? So let's see what Allie does. <laughs> Oof. So uh, first thing I should say is Allie's okay. She's okay. Um, but it caused me to reflect. I assumed something. This is a 50 foot rope swing. Like she's swinging out 50 feet. What if I had been in a conjecturing modality? What if I had been thinking as a conjecturer instead of an assumer? I might have asked Allie, have you ever been on a rope swing before? Is there a connection between your gymnastics ability and what might take place here? Or are those two things maybe not as complimentary as I thought? So, conjecturing can be important. At times, I, I know we all need to assume things. It, it's a part of our life. At times we have to do that. But we should note that when we assume things, it often enacts the shallowest ways of our own being. Sometimes it, it keeps us from things that maybe we should go forward to do. So I, I contend that being mindful of the limitations assumptions might be putting on us can help us move forward into thinking about conjecturing and what is possible through conjecturing. So <clears throat> I began research with a group of students and I did research over a period of many years um, on authenticity and learning. So I have hundreds of examples of when students came to really learn something. And in this research, for it to count as authentic, uh, a lot of things had to happen. The students had to agree that they really learned something. And the community also had to agree that they really learned something. So one student I'll share with you today uh, is named Ross. Ross. Uh, was your preeminent athlete. He's going to dive off the court and he's going to hit that basketball back into play so that his team has a chance to score. Ross is going to slide tackle on the soccer field just to get the ball away from the opponent just enough that one of his teammates can get to it to give them the advantage to switch the flow of play. Coaches love him. He goes all out the whole game. They don't even want to take him out. He is that good at every sport he plays. In the classroom, Ross is uh, quiet. He's not the first one to jump in. He's not the one to answer questions, and he's not the one to help others. But he does enough to be eligible. So we went to a national park um, a couple hours from our school. And Ross, <laughs> Ross began asking questions. He began having conjectures. And uh, as the, the park ranger said, uh, this park is so many thousand acres. Ross jumped in and said, I wonder how big that is. What do you mean? Tell us more. How big is that? You see, my students came from within the city, so they were surrounded by concrete, surrounded by highways. In fact, their knowledge of area was better described by square mile blocks because the city was laid out on a square mile by square mile grid. They understood that better, but this word acres, they, they had no idea what that meant. On the bus ride home, uh, the students and I began talking about this, and Ross was part of this conversation. Um, <clears throat> we don't have experiences with acres and that kind of thing in the city, so uh, what if we studied the land survey system of the United States to see kind of what that was all about. We all agreed over the next couple days of class, that's what we're going to do. We're going to study that. I went home that weekend, prepared it, came back. And uh, at the end of this project, Ross uh, was seen helping others. Ross was seen 
uh, answering questions. Ross was seen working harder, as hard as he does on the, the playing field. He was working that hard in academic math class. At the end, I gave them, uh, you see this picture here of the school, and, and there's a property here, and it's not easy to find the area of that property in acres, but that was the goal. And Ross got the closest of any of the students to the land survey's actual estimates for the amount of space. The question for me, though, is why? Why did Ross tackle this with such ferocity? And when I began to speak with him about it, he said, you know, Actually, my grandfather has a farm with a lot of land out of the city, but my father couldn't find work, so we moved into the city. So I was raised in the city. But when I go to visit my grandfather, my father and my grandfather are all the time talking about sections of land. They're all the time talking about this many acres over here and moving cattle from one set of acres to the other, where they're going to plant, things of that nature. And Ross tells me, I want to be part of those conversations. I'm growing into manhood. I want to speak. I want to be in on that conversation. Surprised me. As a teacher, I couldn't have known that that would have been a spark for him to do so well in this unit. I have hundreds of stories about this, uh, different stories. But let me share with you what the three themes are across every story from all the students every time we had an, uh, an experience with authentic learning. The first thing was the students and I recognized that they always were starting with this conjecturing way of being and that when they did that it defied assumptions. Assumptions that we all know they had made, the students and I, we knew that they had made assumptions like I'm not good at math. I don't have time to learn this. I don't think that way. When they were invested in these moments of authentic learning, they actually defied those assumptions. In fact, they said, I don't even, <laughs> I didn't even think about it. I was so invested in thinking and conjecturing. The last thing was that they were all surprised. They were surprised that they could learn that topic that deeply and they were surprised that they were interested. When I think about that, it holds a lot of significance for me. It actually problematizes the notion that we know ahead of time whether or not we're going to be able to learn something well, or that we know ahead of time whether or not we're going to be interested in a topic. So, one last story that, that I would like to share. Taking the learning that I've done from, from the research with the students uh, further in my career, uh, this is one story in which I've sought to enact conjecturing in my teaching to help my students move beyond assumption. I took students to Fiji, and one of the events that I wanted to happen in Fiji is I wanted them to go up on the mountain with the Fijian villagers, and I wanted them to really learn how some Fijians live. I wanted them to pick the food off the mountain. I wanted them to learn how they use the things on the mountain medicinally. I wanted them to understand the hunt and the preparation and sleeping on the ground and other things that uh, you, know, you do when you're out on the mountain bathe, clean, you have to use the bathroom somewhere, what's going to happen, right? We've got to figure this out. So um, as soon as the, the students had heard about this, uh, we began having discussions. Well, you know, what do you think about this kind of activity? Uh, the students began making assumptions, like it's going to be hot, humid, and miserable. I actually prefer, they, they would say, I actually prefer uh, the comfort of an air-conditioned hotel, please. <laughs> I dislike bugs, but bugs love me. This is not going to be fun. So in order to disrupt those assumptions, I simply ask them to think about one thing, a conjecture. And here is 
the conjecture I gave them. All adventures are good, but not all adventures are comfortable. I said, I don't know whether this is true or not, but I want you to go on this experience and I want you to test this and I want you to modify it. If you need to turn this one sentence into a paragraph to modify it, that's fine. But test it, modify it, let's see what happens. So now Emma's going to come down and Emma's going to um, <clears throat> give voice to one student's experience in Fiji when we went through this together. I asked all the students at the end of the experience to write a reflection about this conjecture and to modify it. So here is Emma with the students' thoughts. We certainly tested the all adventures are good theory. I had been dreading to stay on the mountain for the entire course, but my professor kept saying all adventures are good, but not all adventures are comfortable. It was certainly not comfortable. Sleeping on a cave floor, jungle bathroom facilities, hiking up and sliding down muddy slopes, dirt stained everything. <sighs> he was right, not comfortable at all. But on the other hand, my professor was wrong about the adventure being good. It was, in every way, more than good. It was positively life-changing. I learned that every day they hike up that mountain and that it provides them with natural medicines, bathing, drinking water, food, sacred waterfalls, and shelter. From talking with the Fijian villagers to watching the wild boar hunt and watching them prepare the boar to gathering wood to sticking my hand under a rock to try to catch a prawn, it was all better than good. It was amazing. The villagers and their way of looking at life disrupted my notions on how to live in a good way. And ironically, the part of the trip that I had been dreading the most became a collage of beautiful experiences and memories that have forever changed me. Thank you, Emma. <laughs> so you can feel in the student's voice that the, and, and I could see it transpiring throughout the course. The attention to the conjecture, the ability to modify it, the testing of the conjecture allows, allows all of us to not focus on assumptions, but to think, modify, live, change. <clears throat> I contend that there is wisdom in being in conjecturing mode. Rather than assuming we know and then acting upon that knowledge, we could operate from a more open way of being by testing our conjectures. So this is, of course, just a conjecture. <laughs> I have one more for you. Remember that thing that you reached up for, that hard piece of learning, whatever that is. Again, could be snowboarding, could be astrophysics. I don't know what it is for you. But what is possible for you to learn if you shift your mindset to a conjecturing way of being instead of an assuming one? Again, this is just a conjecture. Please test it. Please modify it. Thank you. <laughs>